Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is NopeNapNarp and I am convinced that Apex Legends ping system will be the best feature in a video game this year and it's only February. The ability to communicate effectively is critical in a squad-based multiplayer battle royale and this game hands you that necessity without ever forcing you to verbally communicate with anyone because of its ping system. This is a godsend for players who want to jump in on the gaming industry's latest boom, but whom also suffer from issues with any level of social anxiety. The ability to talk to complete strangers is quite easy for some, but for a lot of people, the idea of this task alone will create some level of anxiety within them. So welcome to Psychology of Gaming, the series where we look at how psychological principles are worked into games and how games can affect us psychologically. As we've learned throughout the series, one branch of psychology is abnormal psychology, which is the study of unusual thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and how they manifest as mental illnesses. So today we look at what social anxiety is, how it affects online gaming, and how Apex Legends ping system helps to circumvent the possibility of an anxiety attack. So before we can discuss how Apex Legends ping system indirectly helps alleviate social pressure, we first must understand what social anxiety is. In this video here on Celeste, I talked a lot about the most common diagnosis for anxiety, which is Generalized Anxiety Disorder, or GAD for short. Social Anxiety Disorder, or SAD, is a similar condition to GAD, but remains distinct from its more common sibling. Although, it's not uncommon for these two illnesses to be comorbid, meaning that a person is suffering from them both simultaneously. A person who is living with GAD has anxiety about a whole range of topics, from their health, to their finances, to their career goals, as well as things like social interaction. And this broader range of things to be anxious about is one component that separates GAD from SAD, as social anxiety disorder tends to manifest anxiety towards social interactions more than anything else. Of course, as you can tell, both of these conditions can be heightened during times of social interaction. But the difference in definition between the two is outlined in the DSM-5, which is the medical book used to diagnose mental illnesses. According to the DSM-5, people with GAD tend to focus their social anxiety on existing relationships and how their actions will affect those relationships. For instance, a father who is living with GAD may feel unnecessarily anxious about how not allowing his son to go to the big high school party will affect their relationship. Boy. People with SAD, on the other hand, are more likely to have social anxiety towards interactions with new people and how those new people may judge or evaluate them. For example, a college girl living with SAD who is joining a sorority may feel a lot of stress because of her fear on how the new girls that are coming into her life are going to critique and evaluate her. In other words, people living with social anxiety disorder experience a lot of stress and discomfort over the thought of meeting and interacting with new people because of the fear that their performance or personality will be viewed negatively by those new people. And this thought process sabotages any chance of them performing comfortably around new people. And when those new people pick up on their anxiety and react kind of poorly to it because it makes them feel awkward, the person living with SAD blames themselves instead of their disability. This confirmation bias reinforces ideas like, oh, people just don't like me, or ah, I don't think I want to go out tonight to the bar because there's going to be a lot of people there and they're going to judge me and I'm too weird for that, so I'm just going to stay home. And these kind of thoughts make them less likely to try interacting with new people when the next opportunity comes, and that's a real shame. By now you can probably piece together where I'm going with this, as online gaming with strangers is jam-packed with situations that may trigger a person's social anxiety. The thought of having to hop into a game and have your performance evaluated by strangers, some of whom who will not hesitate to call you every single name in the book if you screw up, can be terrifying for those living with social anxiety disorder. 
How even if you don't have that condition, that proposition alone can still make you feel very uncomfortable and may prevent you from ever engaging in multiplayer games in the first place. That's actually the boat I was in growing up. I never wanted to play online games because I didn't want to talk to strangers and not know how to react to them or their criticism in a healthy way. Hey, 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 turn that sad music off right now. This is not some sob story from my childhood. We're moving on with this video right now. For people living with sad, playing an online game with strangers may trigger symptoms like fear of judgment, fear of humiliation, withdrawal, persistent self-criticism, and nervousness to the point of physical illness. Even when playing with friends, a person with social anxiety disorder may repeat lines like, oh guys, I suck at this game, or oh, I'm warning you, I'm not good, so don't expect much. And these kind of lines are said in hopes that the other players will not assess their performance too harshly. They are trying to frame the expectations that the other players are going to have for them in the match. The thought of being judged and having to interact with strangers through online gaming can be terrifying for some, to the point that they will avoid those play modes altogether. Simultaneously, there are also just a lot of people who will feel straight up uncomfortable with the thought of interacting with outsiders in this way to a lesser degree than those living with social anxiety disorder. But as a game developer, you ought to look for ways to alleviate this problem so that as many people as possible can enjoy the game you've built to its fullest extent. In recent years, we've seen a big push in the industry for inclusion, systems or settings that allow as many people as possible to experience a game regardless of their physical or cognitive limitations. These efforts are highly respectable and allow many people to engage with this medium that we all enjoy. Xbox's adaptive controller and assist modes found in games like Celeste and Super Mario Odyssey are just a few ways that the industry is pushing to allow everyone to play video games. And whether it was done for the sake of inclusion or not, the ping system in Apex Legends is a major feature that should be considered to be implemented into all online games that feature cooperative play in PvE or PvP settings. This mechanic is a huge aid to players who want to experience this latest and greatest game, but are turned off by the idea of being forced into online squad play. And now, let's break down why that is. When playing Apex Legends, you will have the ability to mark just about anything on the map with a ping. This is essentially a waypoint that allows you to communicate non-verbally with your teammates. Some games have attempted mechanics like this before, but oftentimes they weren't robust enough to be practical in the heat of combat. But Apex Legends breaks the mold, as reports have come out that Respawn spent months testing the game with voice chat disabled in order to tweak their ping system to make it as perfect as possible. They set out to make sure that if a player didn't have a microphone to chat with, they would still have the freedom to communicate all points of interest to their teammates. In other words, they didn't want a lack of verbal communication to be what doomed a squad to lose a match. And a direct result of crafting this masterpiece of a ping system is that players who suffer from any level of social anxiety don't have to play with a microphone in order to enjoy the game. They can start a private chat by themselves, cancel out all incoming voices from teammates, and rely on the ping system to do the talking for them. And this is because Apex Legends ping system allows the player to tag just about everything they see. When first dropping onto the map, the player can suggest a landing location on the map in both real time and on the game's HUD map using the ping system. Once they touch down, players can mark weapons, body shields, helmets, weapon mods, ammo, supply crates, respawn points, and more to inform players of what items are available in the locations near them. This might be a good place to land. This is a good LZ. Cancel that. Optics here. Close range. Body shields here. Level one. Mozambique here. Open supply bin over here. You can also ping things within your weapon and item menu, which is absolutely brilliant. I need heavy ammo. Heads up, care package coming in. I need heavy Body ammo. Body shield here, level three. Backpack here. 
and when the fighting starts, players can mark enemy locations and the death boxes that they drop. These are just a few of the things that players can ping on the map, and they do this all with the touch of a button. That's right, there's no wonky wheel menu that you have to scroll through to ping different items, you just point at the thing you want to ping, and you hit one button. This will put a marker on that location for your teammates to see, and at the same time, the character you're playing as will verbally call out what was marked so that the players don't have to. That's another extension of the ping system that's worth praising, the fact that your characters are all voiced and will call out exactly what they are seeing. For example, if you start firing at an enemy, your character's display on the HUD will flash a bit and your teammates will hear your character say that they are engaging in combat, all of which clues them in that, hey, you guys better come over here and help me. All of this is automated too, so you never have to fumble with controls while you're worrying about killing an enemy. Even if you get shot at first, your character will shout out things akin to, I'm hit, so that your teammates know exactly what is going on at all times. Not only do these automated voices serve a practical purpose, they also breathe life and personality into each of the playable legends, making this a very well thought out system. Hell, it's so intricate that there are other additional levels to it. For example, if you ping a weapon, your teammates will be given the option to call dibs on that weapon and thank you for it after they get it. Triple take, yeah. Dibs. And again, this is all done through automated voices that allow you to be fully understood without ever having to say a thing. On top of that, you can even interact with the pings your teammates place around you. If one player pings the swamps as their preferred landing zone, while the other pings Skulltown, you can look at both of their pings and say okay to one of them, breaking the tie on where to land. The ping system on its own is mastercrafted, but its additional mechanics like automated voices and the ability to interact with your teammates pings add an unreal level of precision that makes this truly the best ping system ever created in a video game. As I've mentioned already, this is an absolute godsend to players who don't want to spend time talking to others over the mic or who are so anxious about doing so that they would avoid the game altogether if it were not for this mechanic. In Apex Legends, your ability to communicate doesn't have to be verbal, which I'm also realizing now is a huge benefit for mute players as well, because the ping system will take care of most of the work for you while making sure that what you must enter into the controller is a simple one button prompt. I applaud Respawn Entertainment, that's right, I am literally clapping right now for you Respawn for making this ping system because it allows for so many people to enjoy the game they've built so much more comfortably, and by the way, it's a hell of a game in its own right and does a lot more right than just its ping system. I encourage all developers of online games to learn from what Respawn has built so that we can enable all gamers to not only play, but to play effectively without ever being held back by any physical or mental condition. Alright, it's outro time. I hope you guys enjoyed this piece on Apex Legends and how it's helping to alleviate social anxiety within its player base. I give this game two big thumbs up and I'm having a tremendous time playing this game. It's a lot of fun and I really think you ought to give it a go. If you want to hear more of my overall thoughts on the game, you can check out this video right here, which is linked in the description below. Also, I made a Twitter recently, so feel free to drop a follow at NopeNapNarp for all the latest updates on videos and my thoughts on gaming. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more, and as always, have a nice day and take care.